People's interest in moving to Tampa over the past few years has been absolutely mind blowing and it's showing no real signs of slowing down anytime soon. So much so that in the first six and a half months of 2024, I've already hosted almost 230 Zoom calls with potential relocation clients. You heard me right, 230. On those calls, we answer a lot of questions about moving to and living in Tampa Bay. But that's not the only place you can ask me questions. In every video, I always invite you to ask me questions in the comment section. And man, have y'all got questions. In fact, you've been leaving some amazing comments on our videos, and you've been hitting me with great questions about living here in Tampa Bay. So for today's video, I figured it was time to address some of your most interesting questions. And my hope is to help you make an informed decision if you're considering moving here. If we've never met before, my name is Juan Alcala. I make videos that are all things Tampa Bay. And a little over five years ago, my wife Kate and I sold almost everything we moved, packed up our family of five, and moved 1,200 miles south here to the greater Tampa Bay area and have been loving it ever since. I'm also a licensed real estate agent where we help people just like you buy, sell, relocate, and invest here in the greater Tampa Bay area. Now let's get into these questions because boy, there's some good ones. Now, our first question is a good one and it really pertains to the cost of living here in the area. And it's from Antonio and it says, making an estimation how much a couple with no kids but two dogs should earn in order to live in Florida. I like your video and content. I do find your info very helpful. Well, thank you, Antonio. I appreciate that. Florida is very broad. And of course, uh, as you may or may not be aware, it, the cost of living can be dramatically different depending on what area you live in. But I'm gonna speak to here in Tampa Bay because I think that that's extremely valuable. And I'm gonna set this up in a few different ways. When it comes to the cost of living, um, I'm gonna give you guys a resource, number one, so you can know that. And then I'm gonna give you an answer and then I'm gonna give you what I think, right? Depending on what your situation is because this is really gonna come down to your lifestyle. But I wanna give you some resources first. So let's look at the data. So there was this great article posted this March um, from Smart Asset and it, and it showed how much you have to make in order to live comfortably in the United States. And I think that this is a great place to start. All right, and this is based upon the 50, 30, 20 rule. This says that 50% of your budget should be allocated towards housing, groceries, and transportation. 30% goes towards hobbies and entertainment. And that last 20% goes towards savings and investing, those types of things. And what that article found is that one person would need to make roughly $96,500 to live comfortably in any major US city. And Tampa and St. Petersburg tied for 50th in terms of salaries needed to enjoy a comfortable life. Now again, Antonio, this is really gonna matter on what type of lifestyle you have. If you're someone who likes to travel often, if you like to invest in your health, you know, shop at Whole Foods and, and, and quality uh, um, groceries, this is gonna change. If you're somebody who likes dining every evening, obviously those things matter. Um, but what we tend to find with our clients who are relocating to the area, for, for me personally, just looking at what you know a home costs in today's market over four hundred thousand dollars, almost five hundred thousand dollars on average. Um, you know, if you're going to have a car loan, if you've got student debt, all of those things matter. I want to give you a resource that I think is extremely helpful. If you guys go over to the um, Forbes.com cost of living calculator, that thing is incredible because what that will tell you is wherever you're living now, you can put in your 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 annual salary and you can give it the city you wanna to relocate to and it'll give you a very good idea of how much money you need to make relative to what you are currently earning to have the same or similar lifestyle in that new area. I love the Forbes calculator. It's incredible, it's a great resource. I think you'll like it too. All right, we got another great question here. Actually, we got two and uh, Popito, thank you for asking these questions. I think they're wonderful. The first question is, is Sarasota in a high risk flood zone? Now, Popito, most coastal real estate is in a high risk flood zone, especially in Florida. Um, we have very strong storms, including hurricanes that we have to deal with. The closer you are to the Gulf Coast or the Atlantic uh, Ocean, whichever side you're on, um, you are definitely gonna be closer in those floodplains. You know, when you get to the barrier islands, you know, the you know, Siesta Key, Anna Maria Island, those areas are all in high risk flood zones. So that's something to consider. The, the further you get inland, 
the better that tends to get. And one of my favorite resources is going directly to the county and the FEMA flood zone maps. I'm gonna put that right on the screen right now and I'll even put it in the resources for you guys to look at later. This is a great map to use. Uh, now think of it this way, the closer you are to a, um, a, a more high risk flood zone, the more expensive things are gonna be like auto insurance and especially your homeowner's insurance. So just keep that in mind. The further inland you get, the less risk there is for the insurer. So obviously the less expense to you and maybe it's not as scary. I am not quite sure where the question was coming from, whether you were just anxious about floods in general or if you were nervous because of cost. Both of those things are uh, prudent um, and, and worth taking a look at. So this is a great resource. I strongly encourage you to look at it um, if you're considering making a move to the area. So that was question number one. Now question number two, Pepito says, is Sarasota a good place for retirees? Love that question. Now, Sarasota has been rated one of the best places to retire in America several times. So that is already in play. But the real question then becomes is what is the best area for you, Pepito? Or what is the best area for you, the viewer, if you're considering relocating? Now, I want to give you guys another resource. One of my favorite all-time resources, which is niche.com. This is a great resource because locals get to vote on it. Um, it takes into account a lot of statistics. They pull crime data from the FBI. Um, all kinds of things, um, you know, cost of living, they, they aggregate all this information and give you some resources. And on here, it ranks the best places to retire in Sarasota specifically. So I hope that helps Pepito. This is a great resource. Also, again, the flood map from the county is excellent. Also, make sure you check out the hurricane evacuation zones. Those two things usually are, are hand in hand, but not always. So check that out also. And then again, niche.com. This is one of my favorite all-time resources, both as a resident of Florida um, and a realtor here in the area also. Our next question is a great one. It says, thank you for your videos. We live in Arizona for 23 years now and have been in Tennessee for almost three years and having winter blues don't want to go back to Arizona because we enjoy the greenery. Uh, so we were thinking about Florida. We don't want to live in a city, but still want to be close to Publix or a Sprouts grocery stores um, and not be more than three hours away from the ocean. Any suggestions? Great question. Good news is in the state of Florida, you can get from from side to side in less than three hours almost anywhere. So that's awesome. Got that one covered <laughs> pretty easily. Uh, in terms of not living in a city, so we're talking about suburban living or rural living when it comes to this. And this is a great question because honestly, the, this is where the rubber kind of hits the road for most people, right? Um, most rural areas do not have a, um, a Sprouts or a Whole Foods or a Trader Joe's. You find more of those types of amenities in more densely populated areas, suburbs or the urban areas. So keep that in mind. Now, there are suburban areas that offer those type of amenities. You've got places like, um, you know, Wesley Chapel that's growing like crazy that has options like that. You can live in Palm Har Harbor, which is really close to the Gulf Coast um, and get down to Whole Foods down in, in the Clearwater area. So you've got that option. You, uh, further south towards the Lakewood Ranch area, and then you're gonna have access to those types of amenities, Costco, Whole Foods, Trader Joe's. Um, most of the time you can get to amenities like that in about 30 minutes. You know, basically most places in the state. So what I would do, if that's your type of living, decide whether you want to live on the Gulf Coast and enjoy sunsets or if you want to live on the Atlantic side and if you're more of a sunrise type of person in terms of what your enjoyment is, what type of beaches you really like, and then look for those amenities that are most important to you and draw a circumference within 30 minutes. That's really going to kind of help you understand what's going on there. Hope that gives you some insights there because again, it's a great question. Um, and again, I don't think that's going to be difficult to accomplish. It really just comes down to what lifestyle is most important to you. And before we get to the next question, I want to invite you to ask your questions also. Like I said before, I answer all the legitimate comments and questions down below feel free to leave me a message or a question. Happy to answer those. And also, if you're considering moving to the area, don't hesitate to reach out to me and my team. All of our contact information is down there as well, including a link to my calendar so you can schedule one of those Zoom calls I was talking about earlier as well. Okay, our next question is from Skynet General. And uh, thanks for the question, Skynet. Here's the thing I want you to know right out of the rip they are asking about safety in Florida. And I have a real estate license, which means I cannot tell you whether an area is safe or not. 
However, however, I can show you where to look. <laughs> I think that that would be the most valuable thing that I could do for you or anyone else. I love sharing this information because here's the thing, y'all. We all have bias, right? We all believe that where we live is either really safe or usually we think it's really bad and we're trying to get out of it. Those two types of things. But, you know, as human beings, we all have this thing called bias, mean, meaning that we believe a specific way based upon the information we have either been given or that we see on a day in day out basis that anecdotal evidence if you will but here's the thing I want you to understand I'm gonna give you a great resource uh, where we live here in the greater Tampa Bay area um, the city of Tampa actually provides a direct link it's a wonderful interactive map when it comes to crime rates and this thing is awesome dude check this out we're gonna put this on the screen here it not only will show you where the crime is taking place you can set a date range which I think is awesome but more importantly and I think most importantly it shows you what type of crime is taking place because listen y'all almost everywhere in this country especially when you get closer to major metropolitan areas crime goes up that's normal more people more knuckleheads that's the way that life kind of works but the real thing that you need to understand is where you currently live how do you perceive that do you perceive that as a safe place um, or do you perceive that as an area that you need to get away from because crime is heavy? And why I'm sharing this with you is because this crime map comes from the Federal Bureau of Investigation and it is a, across the nation. And why that is important is because what you can do is type in your city, wherever you're watching this from, and look at the actual crime that's happening in your backyard, in your area. And, and most of the time that I show this to people, they are shocked because they didn't know that things like this were taking place in their backyard. Now, again, what are you looking for? Are you looking for petty crime? Are you looking for kids, you know, just being knuckleheads? For me personally, I'm looking for scary things, right? Um, violent crimes. Those are the things that are important to me as a husband, as a, you know, as a father. You know, those are the things that matter to me most. So this is about you and how you perceive things. And I'm not trying to be vague. I live here in the greater Tampa Bay area. I take my kids to St. Pete. I take my kids to Tampa. We walk around as a family. I have never been anywhere in those areas where I felt unsafe or I was worried about me and my family. Now, would I let my kids go run wild without supervision? The answer is no, but I'm not everybody else. So you have to approach this in the way that makes the most sense for you. Again, this interactive crime map is by far one of the best resources I have ever seen. That's another one. I mentioned niche.com earlier, which is a great resource. That pulls information from the same database. So again, these resources exist. You really have to look at it in, in a few different ways, right? What is important to you? right? What are you currently dealing with? Is it perceived safe to you or not? And then is the area you're looking at moving to, does it rank above or below or those types of things? And hopefully this helps, man, because this is really hard. I grew up, you know, in, in living outside of Detroit. I grew, I lived in Detroit. You know, when we moved to Detroit, when I was a child, we were robbed twice in a six month period. That is unsafe period, right? I literally had to fight when I would go to school. That was part of the deal where I lived. Now, my kids don't have any of those challenges, right? And I'm super grateful for that. And I've worked hard to put us into a position where that's not the case. But you've got to look at how this works for you, what is important to you, your goals, your family. We all want safe and secure. I completely understand that. This is a great question, but you have to look and you have to make decisions, qualified decisions with the information you're provided. And I hope this gets you to an answer. Our final question here from Bruce Steamer is about homeowner's insurance. And I have shared my personal homeowner's insurance policy on this channel, both on a live stream and in videos in the past. So much so where people have accused me of not being forthright. And I shared that on a live stream um, where I actually held it up, showed you guys it in, in real time because our insurance, we are completely blessed. I shared this many, many times before. But our home, we pay less than $2,500 for our annual insurance premium, our homeowner's insurance premium. I don't have cut rate insurance. Um, now I'm gonna explain how I got to that because Bruce wants to know. He says, curious if you did anything to get your insurance rate that low 
such as hurricane clips for the roof, impact windows, or anything else? And this is a great question. And I'm gonna explain to you guys how our house is built um, and explain to you how to get some of the best insurance rates also, okay? I don't sell insurance, but I wanna share with you the same counsel we give clients that puts them in the best possible position, okay? So first and foremost, my home is an all block construction home, okay? Literally, it's made out of cinder blocks, all right? They tie them together with rebar, there's concrete. I don't build houses, but I, I know that our home is built like a little mini bomb shelter. So that's the first thing. So you can have a, um, a block home or or you can move to areas like St. Pete and Tampa where there's stick construction, stick built, traditionally built homes. And you might be hearing me right now and be like, Juan, what's the difference? Like, well, one's concrete and one's stick. Well, when you got to stand up to hurricane forced winds, right? What home is more likely to be standing up on stronger winds? Is it the home that's built out of, out of uh, traditional lumber or is it a home that's built out of block? So that's the first thing. I would target an all block construction home. The next thing that you're going to want to do to mitigate your um, insurance costs to bring it down if possible is to be in a non-flood and a non-evacuation zone. We touched on both of those things earlier in the video. So target those two areas. My home, Bruce, is, is uh, almost 30 feet above sea level, even though we're less than two miles to the Gulf. And this is why Bruce was asking, because we are very close to the Gulf of Mexico um, and we have a very reasonable insurance rate. So all block construction, I'm almost 30 feet of elevation. Um, uh, those are two great things. Non-flood, non-evac zone. And people are hearing me like, well, how can you be that close to the ocean and not be in an evacuation zone? It's because of the elevation of the property. So keep that in mind also. Um, I do not have hurricane impact windows. I do have a new roof. Well, at this point, it's almost a year old. So just kind of put that in perspective. Um, but we have the original windows to the home. That is something we're in the process of upgrading right now. I am going to go to hurricane impact because I don't want to deal with boarding up my house or putting up shutters every time there's a storm threat. I just want to shut it down and it, you know, let the Lord do his work after that, right? Um, and, and to be quite honest, y'all, this is just something you have to deal with as a Floridian. You're talking about homeowner's insurance. You're talking about hurricanes, especially if you're going to live closer to the coast. If those things terrify you, move to Orlando, okay? Are you still in, in, in harm's way in terms of wind? Yeah, absolutely. Can you still get flooded over in Orlando? You absolutely can. But in theory, um, these things start to slow down and um, the, the, the challenges diminish as they get further into the state. So this is just the reality of living in Florida. I hope you guys have gotten a tremendous amount of value out of this video. Keep bringing those questions. I invite you to the comment section down below. Again, I will answer every legitimate comment um, and question that I see. I try to get to those. I actually go through those daily. I welcome you to that. If you're considering moving to the area and you have more questions, maybe ones we didn't address in today's video, I invite you to the Zoom calls that we talked about earlier. All of that contact information is down below. It even and says schedule a time to talk with Juan and then I will be there. And if you know anyone else considering moving to the area, do not hesitate to share this video with them also so they can get as much value as you did. And as always, and until next time, go out and live that Tampa life.